We looked at uh, last time uh, the real number system. We looked at uh, what we called as the nested interval property. <coughs> Uh, some more concepts about uh, special subsets of real line. They are also common to uh, higher dimension spaces. So, let me introduce uh, briefly R2, R3 and in general Rn. I think most of you are familiar with R2 and R3, but the same thing works for Rn also and we will come back to it later on also. So, the basically idea is that uh, say for example, R2 or Rn is a set of all n tuples where each component or each coordinate is in real line. So, you can uh, think it as a vector with n components x1, x2, xn. There is uh, on Rn, there is addition. So, what is addition of two vectors? That is a component wise addition. Scalar multiplication, you can multiply each component by the same scalar. So, that is scalar multiplication. There is no multiplication of vectors as such in R2 or Rn. Like in real line there was, there is a notion of a dot product and cross product, we will not be using them. And there is no order on R2, R3 or Rn. You cannot compare, you cannot define an order between vectors, one vector bigger than the other vector. Okay. So, there are problems about that. However, what you can do is like absolute value, you can define what is called the magnitude of a vector. Right? So, for a vector x with components x1, x2, xn, we define what is called the magnitude of uh, the vector or the norm of the vector that is sigma absolute value x i square that is to power 1 by 2 i equal to 1 to n. Um, in R2, this is just the Pythagoras uh, distance, right? Right angle triangle x1, y1. <coughs> uh, and this has properties which are very similar to the absolute value function. So, properties this is always bigger than or equal to 0, equal to 0 if and only if each x i is equal to 0. So, that is uh, corresponding to the absolute value. The second property is as far as scalar multiplication is concerned, alpha times x is equal to mod alpha times norm of x. So, that is uh, scalar multiplication, how does this magnitude behaves and uh, the third is the triangle inequality property and namely absolute value of x plus y is less than or equal to So, well, basically uh, it behaves very much like uh, the notion of absolute value for real numbers. So, as a result it gives rise to a notion of comparison between or the distance between two points. One point is close to another. So, we define norm of x minus y, right. So, you can call it as the, you can define this as the, or you can call this as the distance between x and y and so basically uh, the idea is that the notion of uh, limits of sequences right uh, and notion of convergence of a sequence dependent upon the notion of distance right. We said a sequence xn of real numbers converges to a point x if xn is coming 
closer to x and that closeness was measured in the term of the distance. Now, we have a notion of distance available in R n. So, we can uh, consider notion of sequences in R n and notion of convergence of sequences in R n. So, let us just uh, write because uh, that will be useful. So, let us write uh, definition of a sequence and ordered collection of points x n and bigger than or equal to 1 is called. Uh, so, we will put a underscore to indicate this is a vector, okay. is called a sequence in R n. And as usual, written as we write it simply as x n, same notation n bigger than or equal to 1. So, uh, so let us say uh, definition 1, definition 2, we can define now convergence a sequence x n. is said to converge to say a vector a belonging to R n if what should be definition? The distance between x n and a becomes smaller and smaller that is same as saying norm of x n minus a goes to 0 as n goes to <coughs> infinity. Right. Now, keep in mind this quantity norm of x n minus a is a number, is a real number. So, for every n you are getting a non-negative sequence of real numbers, is a sequence of numbers which are non-negative and real. So, we can ask whether the sequence converges to 0 or not. So, this part this is precisely convergence of real numbers. So, we are using convergence of real numbers to define convergence of vectors in R n. So, keep that in mind. Okay? Now, uh, here is a small observation, you cannot write it as a note. So, supposing uh, our uh, vector, uh, okay, let us note something, namely um, x minus y. If I look at the distance between two vectors x and y, right, this is always bigger than x has got components, y has got components. So, let us say x is x1, x2, and so on, xn and y has components y1, y2, yn, then this is always bigger than or equal to xi minus y a. Is that okay? Because what is the distance norm of x minus y? That is xi minus y a absolute value square raised to power 1 by 2. So, that summation is 1 to n. So, that is always bigger than each term and this is is it okay? So, this implies that if x n converges to a, then uh, okay, I am using n, so I should probably uh, because I am using n for r n also. So, let me write x k if x k converges to a as k goes to infinity then this is same, this implies, then this implies that look at, uh, okay, so let x vector k, let me write this as i, what is that? That is ith component of the vector x k will converge to the ith component a i for every i between 1 and n. Is that okay? This inequality just now. 
we are saying that if a vector is convergent, this sandwich theorem mod of x i minus y i is less than this. So, if this becomes smaller, then this becomes smaller, right? Sandwich theorem, is it okay for everybody? If not, get clear. So, let me write here because is bigger than x k ith component minus a i, right? So, each component distance is dominated by the distance between the vectors. So, sandwich theorem implies that if that goes to 0, then this goes to 0. So, what we are saying is if a sequence of vectors is convergent, then each component converges to the corresponding component, right? Now, let us look at the converse of this. Suppose the kth com uh, ith component converges to the ith component for every i. Can I say that the vectors also converge? Clearly, yes, because what is this distance between x n and a? That is summation of the distance is, this is summation here now, if it is quality, right? Each one is going to 0, so sum goes to 0 by the limit theorems for real numbers. Is that okay? Because norm of x n minus a is equal to summation i equal to 1 to n norm of x, okay, I am writing k here, so x k i minus a i or not norm is absolute value because they are real numbers square raised to power 1 by 2, right? That is the definition of distance. Here each term is going to 0, so square goes to 0 by limit theorems, right? The summation goes to 0, non-negative square root goes to 0. So, by the limit theorems for sequences of real numbers, this for each i goes to 0 implies the distance between the vectors also goes to 0. So, what we are saying is a sequence of vectors is convergent if and only if each component converges to the corresponding component. So, let us write it as a theorem if you like, can converges to A if and only if each component sequence is convergent. To where? To the corresponding component. So, as far as convergence of sequences of vectors is concerned, it is same as analyzing convergence of each component. So, no, not a big deal, right? So, that is okay. So, now uh, you will be using this concept uh, to define something. So, let us uh, start with the, let us take a set A contained in R n. A is a subset in R n. So, given a sequence in A, a sequence so that each element is in k, supposing it is convergent, then the limit of that sequence may or may not belong to a, right. So, we are trying to now specialize special subsets of R n. So, we say definition a subset a in R n is said to be closed. It is called a closed set if for every sequence x n belonging to A, x n converging to A implies A belongs to A, right? So, what we are saying is a set which includes all limits of sequences of its elements, we will say it is a nothing goes out kind of thing. So, it is called a closed set. The nomenclature is very clear, okay. 
So, let us look at uh, some examples. Right. So, let us look at uh, A belonging to Rn and the set A is the singleton A. Okay. Is this set closed? Is the set consistent of a single point closed? Well, obviously, because the only possible sequences that we can consider of elements of the set are the constant sequence. And constant sequence converges to the constant, okay? And that belongs to A. So, A is closed. Okay, let us look at uh, when n is equal to 1, some special cases. So, A is equal to that is a subset of R, right? An open interval. The name itself says open interval, so it should not be close, right? But anyway, that is not the reason. We want, so if we want to prove this set is not close, then what should I prove? There is a sequence of elements of the set, it converges somewhere, but the limit is not inside that set. So, precisely if this is my A and this is my B, I can take a sequence sort of coming from the right side to A, right? And the limit will be A, which is not inside the set. So, what could be such a sequence? So, you can look at A plus 1 by n, but right, n suitably large enough so that you are inside. So, here is A plus or A plus 1 may be outside, no, B may be bigger than. But anyway, let us from some stage onwards, right, A plus 1 over n will be inside the interval AB for some n large enough. So, this will converge to A, which is not part of A. So, this is A is not closed. For the same reason, you can take as A, B, it does not matter. One point, one counter example is good enough or you can take A, B, right. These are all R or you can even take A to plus infinity and uh, minus infinity to A are not closed. All these are not closed subsets. Obviously, if I include here, can I say A, B is closed? Why is that closed? It is not because a sequence converging to A will, in, that means A is inside it. To say it is closed, I have to show for every sequence in the set, if it converges, that point limit must be inside the set. So, let us take, so let x n belong to A, n bigger than or equal to 1 and x n converge to some x. Then what can I say about these x n's? They are inside the set A and A is the interval A B that means this is true for every n, right? Is it clear? Because it belongs to A, A is the interval A B which is closed interval. So, A less than or equal to and that implies if it converges, X n converges, what can you say about the limit? If x n are bigger than or equal to a, the limit cannot go below a. We have seen that. So, a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b. But if they were open, if it was a strict inequality, then the limit could become equal to a that we have seen in the example. So, then that will not be true. So, less than or equal to a is okay, right? 
the limit can become equal to even though each a n is strictly bigger than a the limit can become equal to a and that is okay for us because we want a less than or equal to x less than or equal to so hence a which is equal to a b is closed okay let us uh, similar thing probably will be nice to okay let us define something which is going to be useful for every x belonging to r n and epsilon a number b x epsilon i'm going to define a set right this is all vectors y belonging to r n such that the norm of x minus y is less than epsilon all points all vectors in y uh, in r n such that it is distance from x x is a point which is fixed so because we are looking at the pythagorean distance or pythagorean uh, way of looking at so if i take it r2 it's very easy to visualize here is the point x a point y will be inside if its distance is less than at the most epsilon so it will be right it will be all points inside what we visualize as the ball okay so you can think it as so this is a visualization of this thing right sometimes it is good but if i look at a point geometric kind of thing on the boundary then its distance will be equal to epsilon so that will not be a part of the set so that's why it is called a open ball centered at x radius epsilon because geometrically it looks like that so we call it as open ball centered let me also define because we are defining this thing let me also define b bar x epsilon to be the set of all y so the distance x minus y is less than or equal to epsilon. then we are also including the geometric boundary kind of thing also in the equal to also are included so let us uh, look at can i say this is close so which of them are close can i say the ball x epsilon is close is a close set no so but that means you have to construct an example of a sequence so i leave it as an exercise it is not difficult to just intuitively is very clear right you can go towards boundary kind of thing na no? take a sequence going towards boundary like we did for the open interval ab something similar you can do slightly we have to do slight more kind of be slightly more careful about because there are many possible directions here in real line only one left or right here are all possible directions so but we can go any direction so what about this thing why this is a close set now i have to prove that for every sequence like in the interval closed interval so the same proof works basically if i take any sequence xn in this closed ball right and converging to a which is right 
that means what the distance between x n and a will become x n goes to a right so what is the distance of x n from x because if i want to show it is close i should show that the distance of the limit from x is less than or equal to epsilon right but the distance of each point xn from x because xn is inside is less than or equal to so can i say that so here is uh, something i am giving a hint this is true if xn belong to ball x epsilon x, uh, and xn converge to a then x minus a is less than or equal to epsilon so that is what is to be done right and what is given because xn is belong given norm of xn minus x is less than or equal to epsilon for sorry xn yes is less than or equal for every n right because xn is belong to Xns belong to the ball, close ball. So less than or equal to. We want to show that this implies. So that is exercise. Okay. Just if I y norm of x n minus x implies that thing. Is it okay? Idea is similar to that of the closed interval AB. If x n is in the closed interval a b, then x n minus a, right? They remain. There is order here. Here is the order of the distance actually. So try that. So that will also prove modulo this part of exercise that this also is it. So by the way, this kind of things, okay. Let us give it a name because they are going to be useful. Uh, for every Point y belonging to ball centered at any x and radius epsilon is called. Okay, okay. no, I should write it properly. Uh, every ball, every open ball is called a neighborhood. Of y belonging to b x epsilon. So what we are saying is, if it is an open ball, if it is an open ball of radius epsilon centered anywhere, it doesn't matter. Then for every point y inside that ball, the ball is called a neighborhood of the point y. Right? The ball is called a so that mean for this y could be anywhere so here is a point y or it could be anywhere y here for all elements of that open ball this open ball is called a neighborhood of that point so obviously it is a neighborhood of the center also anyway right so it is something similar to let us look at what happens in the real line so in the real line, uh, if you have got a, so here is point x. What is an open ball of radius epsilon? So it will be x minus epsilon n. That is open interval. Simply right. So what we are saying is, for every point inside, this is a neighborhood. Okay. It is a neighborhood of the point y. Or this is ball okay so i think i will elaborate it slightly more later on so is the concept of neighborhood okay for everybody an open ball is neighborhood of every point inside it that is the definition okay so now let us look at uh, closed sets okay so we have looked at many examples of closed sets So we have seen that 
there are sets which are not closed and there are some sets which are closed right so can we do one thing take a subset of rn some of the limits may go out let us throw them in and make a bigger set so what do you expect of the bigger set the bigger set should have the property that it contains limits of all sequences in that right 